There's no doubt that coding is one of the best high income skills to learn and software engineering and web development is one of the best careers to get in. So in this video, I want to share with you an in-depth guide on how to approach your learning when coding and on how to become a software engineer the fastest way possible. Hi, I'm Prakar. I'm a software engineer and content creator from Toronto, Canada. I have been a software engineer for six years now. In my previous years, I have worked as a front end developer and a full stack web developer in Chicago for three years before I moved to Corona Canada in 2020 to become a freelance and a fully remote software engineer. Today we'll be talking about how to pick a career path when it comes to software engineering, how to choose the right technologies and programming languages and in what order you should be learning them to make the most sense. We'll also talk about different resources that you can learn coding and software engineering skills from. Then from there on we will talk about the most important and crucial things you need to do before you begin applying for jobs. Then finally we'll cover how to actually apply for jobs and get one. So stick around till the end if you want to learn everything you need to know on how to approach your career and your journey to become a software engineer and get a job. Okay, so let's say you have decided to become a software engineer and you might be thinking, do you need a degree? Even though I personally have went to college and graduated with a bachelor's in software engineering, I honestly do not believe that you need a degree at this point to get into this career. Sure, a degree will help you to get a job faster, but also a degree will cost you over 200 k in the us close to that amount in canada and on top of that four years of your life while in college so you can decide for yourself if you want to spend that time learning by yourself and using online resources and coding boot camps to learn the same thing faster in six months or a year and get to work as soon as you are ready and on top of that in the current scenario the companies that i have worked with personally and i know about other companies as well all they really care about is that you have technical skills and coding skills to actually build applications and you you have the communication skills to work in a team and collaborate with other people and if you can do so successfully you are well equipped to, to get any job in this world right now to confirm my point of view on this let me give you some numbers a 2018 survey conducted by stack overflow suggested that 27 percent of software engineers in the world have not been to a college for a bachelor's a master's or a phd they are either self-taught or have went to a coding boot camp or learned from online resources to score their jobs and to to give you more proof in my own career of six years of software engineering at different companies i have worked with people who have never went to college for software engineering i worked with a person who was just a teenager and got into web development packing away and learning things online and they applied for a job for the same job that i had and they got it just based on their experience and their passion for coding and problem solving so if they can so can you now before getting into this career you might also be thinking what about tools like chat gpt and other artificial intelligence tools that are equipped now to write code will they replace all of these careers and jobs around software engineering and writing code i don't think so even though chat gpt or github copilot can generate code you still need people who understand that code and can use it and plug it into applications to do something with it or build applications with that code but if you're someone who knows nothing about code or has no idea on how to build large applications with code won't know how to actually use the code that these artificial intelligence tools are generating so you still will need software engineers who understand code and use these tools to be more productive and generate applications faster and you can also use these artificial intelligence tools to learn code yourself you can give it a piece of code that you don't understand and can ask it to explain it to you in depth and chat gpt will do just that or you can ask it to generate code faster and work on your projects faster as well i would recommend to you that you should not get left behind and rather use these artificial intelligence tools to learn faster and build faster yourself now before you wonder where you can start learning about coding and software engineering i highly suggest that you pick a career path for yourself first as a software engineer and a web developer you can choose to become a front-end developer they are responsible for building client-facing applications and user interfaces think about everything that you see on a website and you interact with that so that's a front-end job that's a client-facing application that a front-end developer has built for you to use you could also become a back-end developer and we'll be building applications that work on the data and serve it to the front-end applications to make them more interactive and dynamic. You will be building APIs that are application program interfaces that interface with the database that hold the data and pull in the data from the databases and perform operations and calculations on that data to make it more actionable and serve it to the front-end as I said before. Or you could become a full-stack developer. Anyone who has all the skills of a front-end developer and a back-end developer and can combine it to 
work on entire web solutions. Or you could also choose to become a mobile developer or a DevOps engineer. But in this video, we'll only be talking about web development careers as I'm personally a web developer and that's where I'm most experienced in. So that's the information and knowledge I'll be sharing with you guys. Now that you know what career options and career paths are there for a software engineer, let's talk about the software engineering skills and programming languages you will need to learn to become a software engineer yourself. Let's say you want to become a front-end developer. For that, you will have to learn HTML, which is a markup language and is used to structure and display content on the web. You'll also have to learn CSS, which is a styling language, which defines the styles, the layout, the fonts, and the colors of a web page and how they should look and feel. CSS is also responsible for making the applications responsive on different devices. From there on, the most important skill and programming language you will have to learn then is JavaScript. JavaScript is one of the most popular languages in the world and is used to create interactive and dynamic web pages that run on the user's browser. Now, just these two technologies alone with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you will be equipped enough to start working as a software engineer and get some client work. But it's not enough to get you some premium jobs. To get to that high level skill set to be able to get the best jobs around the world, you will also need to learn some frameworks. There's a few frameworks that I like and have worked with in the past, like React, Vue.js, etc. There's other frameworks as well. If I were you, I would pick React as my choice of framework to work with JavaScript as it is developed by Facebook and is one of the most popular JavaScript frameworks out there. Out of all the companies that I worked with in my previous six years of developer experience, every single company that I worked with and was building client-facing applications with JavaScript and React. And it's one of the best frameworks to work with because it's very intuitive and easy to pick up. Now, after you have learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and a framework, ideally React, you will also need to learn how to use developer tools on the web browser. This is where you will be able to see the entire structure of the website from HTML tags, components, their styles. You will need developer tools to build your projects and debug your code. Now let's talk about backend development. Now to become a backend software engineer, you will have to learn server-side programming languages. The most popular ones are Python, Java, Ruby. There's others as well, but these are the ones that I have used and have enjoyed the most. Python, in my opinion, is one of the most beginner friendly. And with Python, you can build web applications and can also use it to learn something about data science. A lot of the data scientists use Python to build applications as well. You can also choose to learn Java. Java is one of the oldest backend programming languages and is widely popular. And you can easily find a job for yourself if you know how to write code in Java. Now to become a full stack developer, you will need all the skills, the programming languages, and the technologies that I've mentioned above for front-end development and back-end development. But along with that, I suggest to you that you also learn about databases and also learn a language like SQL that is used to read, write, and manipulate databases. After learning the programming languages and the technologies that I talked about, you will also need to learn a version control tool like Git. Now, what is version control? Version control is a software management tool that is used to keep track of different projects and their code. It allows tracking changes in code and allows multiple software engineers and developers to work on the same code base simultaneously. Now, Git is the most popular version control tool out there. And it is the tool that I have used at every single job or client that I work with in my own career. Now, let's talk about where can you learn these from? Some of the free resources that I've used and enjoyed in my own journey to learn code and become a software engineer. Now, YouTube is my favorite. Some of the channels that I enjoy are Papa React, Sani Sangha, Traversy Media is also also a great resource. Code with Mosh is another channel which is great for learning all sorts of programming languages like JavaScript, React, Java, etc. The Net Ninja and Web Dev Simplified are also great resources on YouTube and channels to learn from. Some of the paid courses that I've used to learn from myself are Amigos Code. He also has a YouTube channel, but his paid resources are great. You can learn React, you can learn about databases, you can learn about Java, you can learn about object-oriented programming, and all of those thing from his website. I highly recommend it. Code with Mosh is also a great resource again. He has a YouTube channel, 
but also has a paid course for different languages and frameworks that you can learn from. Webdesk Simplified is also a great resource to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. Zero to Mastery is another resource and website that I've come across in recent years, and they are doing great work to put together coding tutorials and things like that for you to learn from. Check them out. And if you're someone who needs more accountability, I would highly recommend that you enroll yourself in a coding bootcamp to learn the best programming languages and the best way to become a software engineer in six months or less. But just remember, becoming a software engineer, learning how to code and build applications is not an easy task. It's challenging and can get frustrating at times. It's not something that you can just pick up in three months and get a job out of nowhere. I've seen people do so, but a minimum amount of time that I feel that most people take to learn coding to actually get a job is six months to a whole year. I recommend that you spend a minimum of three to four hours every single day on learning about these tools, programming languages, and building your own application to solidify your learning by using it practically building your own projects. Once you have learned enough about coding and how to build applications, I recommend that you build a minimum of five to 10 projects yourself before you begin applying for jobs. Now let's talk about some of the most important and crucial things you need to do before you start applying for jobs. The first thing you need is a good resume. Create a generic one and then use that as a template and modify it for every new job that you apply to. I would suggest that you use a tool like Canva and the templates that they already have on there for resumes to build out your own resume. Now, once you have a solid resume, I recommend that you get a LinkedIn profile if you already don't have one. This is the place where all the companies and recruiters are looking for candidates for different job opportunities. Groom your LinkedIn profile and put everything on there that you think can maximize your chances when you come across different recruiters and employers. Upload a nice profile picture. It doesn't have to be all that professional, but you should at least look sincere in your picture. Create an eye-catching bio with a strong header. If you want to become a front-end developer, write that you are an aspiring front-end developer. If you want to become a back-end developer, write that, along with a few other things that you're passionate about in life. Add your education to your LinkedIn profile. If you don't have a bachelor's or a master's, that's fine. Mention your education to the best of your knowledge. List out any previous relevant work experiences. And then bonus tip, get some people who you have worked with in the past in other jobs that you have had before and get them to write your testimonial or recommendation. This again will help show your credibility and will build trust with anyone who visits your profile, be it a recruiter or an employee at a company who's looking to hire software engineers. Now that you have a polished LinkedIn profile, build a portfolio. This is a must. I highly recommend that you build a simple website and list out all the projects on that website, highlighting your skills. Add a minimum of five projects that you have built on your journey to learn coding and becoming a software engineer. It could be a data dashboard you might have built. It could be an example e-commerce website, a real estate website, or something else that you worked on. Pro tip, spend a little bit of money and actually deploy your websites to an actual URL and list them out on your portfolio. So when someone visits your profile and your portfolio and your website, they can click on the links and go to live projects that showcases your skills. It will really impress your recruiters and your employers and will maximize your chances over other candidates to get the job. Now that you have a resume, you have polished up your LinkedIn profile and have a portfolio. Let's talk about how to approach applying for jobs. I highly recommend that you use LinkedIn's features to find different job opportunities and companies that you want to work with. There's a feature that I use when I was applying for jobs my first time around back in Chicago 2018. It's called Fast Apply. You can literally upload a resume on there and apply to different jobs in a single click. Many companies allow this option to get in as many candidates as possible. So have a generic resume uploaded to your LinkedIn profile. And for each new job that you want to apply for, tailor your resume to that. Modify it to what your employer wants to see in your resume for that specific job. Upload it and then fast apply again. Apply to as many companies as possible. And once you start getting responses back from your recruiters for interviews, begin your research process. Every company that you hear back from and get an interview with, research that company. Study their job description. Try to understand what are the products that they are building, what the job role will be, what your day-to-day -day responsibility will look like, what is the tech stack that they use. Try to make an effort to learn about the company culture. Try to make an effort about the impact that they have created for their users in this world. Identify the specific skills that they mention on the job description. Try to think about and match it to your own skill sets. The more skills that you can identify that match with your skill set will increase your chances 
as a candidate. Also, prepare thoroughly for technical interviews. Learn and research every interview question you can on the web around the skills that you have learned and the skills that the companies that you are interviewing with are going to be using. As much as you can get out of a job description, do it. And the better you understand, the better you will be able to communicate with the recruiters or with your interviewer. Now, most jobs that you will apply for will ask for an experience, for a minimum experience of two to three years for a junior developer role or a mid-level developer role. Now, do not be discouraged if you do not have any experience. Apply for the job anyway. And remember, it doesn't matter how well your interviews go. You will get rejected plenty times. Do not get discouraged from this. Use every interview as an opportunity to learn, get feedback, and reiterate on the problems that you might have faced during one interview and improve upon it for the next. Every interview you fail, your goal should be to learn from it. Got stuck with a technical question that your interviewer asked you? It's okay. If you fail that interview, research that question so that you're better prepared for your next interview. To be honest, when I was applying for my own first job back in 2018, I applied to over 300 companies and interviewed with at least 50 companies and got rejected so many times. First of all, I was an immigrant, so I was on a visa and I needed sponsorship from US companies to be able to work there. And that alone was a factor for them to keep rejecting me on and on. But I stuck through it and got the job anyway. It doesn't matter how many times you fail, how many interviews you fail and don't make. You still have to strive through that phase and keep interviewing with different people until you find the job that you can start working at. This will be a challenging time for you. But again, do not get discouraged. Stay on path. And with every interview, you will be more prepared for the next one. And until you find the company that you succeed with. Okay, so this is exactly what I would do if I had to restart my career and learn how to code, become a software engineer, apply for jobs, and actually get a job the fastest way possible. I hope this helps you guys. But before you begin on this path and choose to become a software engineer, I do want you to prompt yourself and ask yourself some serious questions. Is this career for you? Ask yourself if you enjoy problem solving because most of your work is going to be very cognitive and challenging tasks. Also solving problems every single day can become frustrating very fast. So you will need a high amount of tolerance and perseverance in you to succeed in this job in the long term. So ask yourself these questions. And if the answer is yes, get on with it. I believe you can do it without a degree, with a degree, regardless, anyone can get into a software engineering career and do well for themselves as long as they are up for the challenge. I wish you all the best. I want to be here for you guys as a resource. Let me know if I can create more videos on how to become a software engineer. Also, comment down below if you want me to create any courses. I'm at a stage where I'm actually thinking about creating my own software engineering courses or even courses around how to work with freelance clients or get a job. And if I get enough responses back, and enough interest from you guys, I will be happy to create courses for you. Now, if you found value in this video, please leave a like on this video because it will help me reach other people as well. And other people will be able to find this video and find value from it. Subscribe to the channel for future content and I'll catch you guys in the next video. All right.